thank the Lord today for the Sunday team and thank him for um, the grace he had given to them to stand in the gap, to remain faithful at a very inconvenient time. But they do it with joy. They do it knowing whom they are serving. They do it for um, all of us. May the good Lord bless them. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you for the team, our family who wake up early in the morning praying for us us that this word may have its way in our hearts therefore lord we pray that this word will have its way in our hearts lord touch us open our eyes help us to relate to what you are telling us help us lord to grab it with all our hearts precious father for it there's no other way but through this thank you father this morning in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah yes we are now in matthew chapter 6 verse 25 and 25 till 34 you know, when you read, it's been dubbed by so many. There's nothing else to say. Take no thoughts. Because that's what Jesus said here. But then, when we look at it, he says, look, trust me. I'm able to do it. There's something I'm telling you. Believe me. You know, when he started talking to them from the book of Matthew chapter 5, and he was telling them, blessed are these, blessed are that, blessed are those that mourn, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He started telling them what life is all about. The real essentials, what we should concentrate on, what should what we should go about in life. That's what Jesus started from this sermon on this on the mount, from these words that he spoke to them, and from there he carried on to tell us, look, when you are doing all these persecutions will come people will misunderstood stand you they will do so many things to you and he says dear four this is what you do living this life don't worry about the scribes and pharisees and their hypocrisies make sure you leave above them and then he continued again to tell us about our daily lives things we should do things we shouldn't do and then coming to chapter six he carried on again how on our, how to do our arms and how when we pray what we should pray for and then carried on again to tell us about our treasures we are to lay them now after telling you all these things so what do i expect you to do i've been talking about righteousness righteousness about me about what you shouldn't do about what you should do then i have all these things what was the gain what's the reward what what do we look up to do we just close our arms sit in one place and don't do anything just being busy doing he says no when you are doing all these things I want to tell you Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat and what you shall drink nor yet for your body for ye shall what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body than remit that's what he's saying Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? That's what the Bible says. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his stake? stature and why take your thoughts for remit consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these we are for if god so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe ye o ye of little faith let's read it again verse 30 we are for if god so clothes the grass of the field make them beautiful that we desired them 
they bring out their flowers so many colors and then we pluck it put in the flowers in our houses in our rooms in our kitchens dinings living rooms all over the whole house and we're looking at them admiring them to some people it brings healing to them some people it brings relaxation some people so many things if god could clothe them this way the beauty of the hibiscus is different from the beauty of the rose the beauty of the rose is different from the beauty of the lily the beauty of the lily is different from, just keep naming them but the ones we've cultured and the ones that have grew wide out there on the mountains beautiful if god has clothed them that you see them in the morning blooming in the evening they are gone the grass is looking so good our vegetables looking so good and you look at them it's wow and we cut them up chop them put into the oven in the pot and they eat now listen, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? This should humble us. Very, very humble us. How much? These things grow in the wide. They don't even bother with whether there's wind. They are not bothered where there's sun. They are not bothered where there's tornado or whatever or flood or what. All they know at their time and season, they are just blooming. Verse 31, therefore, take no thoughts, saying, what shall we eat? Mm, what shall I eat? Do I go hungry? There's nothing on my plate. There's no money on my bank account. Um, The neighbors, nobody cares. They're all by themselves. I can't go into the shop to beg for food. They expect me to come with money and to buy or they push me out and call the police. Do I take plates and stand on the street begging for food? What do I do? Why did he ask me to take no thought in a life like this where I have to work so I can pay my bills? If I don't work, mm, the electricity bill is not freebie, not at all. They will cut off my light. I will die in the cold. I wouldn't have water to boil, hot water to get some in to keep myself warm. What do I do? Oh, the bankers will move me out of the house if I don't pay my mortgage. The landlord will send me out if I don't pay my rent. So what happens? What, what, does the, what is the Bible talking about here? Because life is about toil. It's about hard work. Life is about go get it at all costs if you want to leave the next day. So why is Jesus saying take no thought when everything in our environment makes for taking thought, makes for worry and anxiety? Makes for shivering and crying and screaming out and shouting. Makes for me to get up and just go for self-help. And he says, what you shall eat or what we shall drink or where we soul shall we be clothed? Do I go naked? It's cold. It's winter. What I have is not enough. I will die of cold. Verse 32, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. Ah, what does that mean? What does the Gentile mean here? Mm. So you mean everybody going out there, this is what they seek and that's what they do. They are called the Gentile. For your heavenly father knoweth what you have need of all these things. He knows you have need of these. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is the Zinga, verse 33. That is it. So why we be seeing, seeing, do I do this? What do? What does that mean? I can't fold my head. I keep quiet and then nothing has happened and I'm dying in cold and I'm dying in hunger and I've not moved and it says, but seek first. Mm. Seek first is not what we do in hypocrisy. 
It's not what we do because we're pushed. It's not what we do so that God can bless us. It's not what we do with conditions. Let's do it so that these can come. If I seek first his kingdom, pray, read my Bible, then silver and gold and billions and trillions of and thousands of dollars and pounds and yens and whatever currency you use will be all in my back garden now we don't do we don't follow the lord we don't love him for what we get in this earth, in this earth that is temporal that is just for a, a season and for a while verse 34 take therefore no thoughts for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof brethren care is forbidden the law says don't care don't worry don't get yourself into that and he says Let's go back again from where we started reading. Why did Jesus say, take no thoughts? Brethren, when we were formed, we weren't part of it. Nobody asks to be made green or yellow or black or blue, tall or short, big or small, none. He made us in his own image. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, he told Jeremiah, I knew you. He's the one that formed us. Now, here we go. A typical example of the potter and the clay. When he said to Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. Now, this cup is the shape it is because the those who made it chose this shape it goes this way down this way this cup had no part not at all the color they have given to it this cup was a part of it mm. this cup is nice and quite warm i have a drink mm. Mm. wonderful that i have gone into the market to get a cup this color in this this color had no parts. But here you go. It's fulfilling the purpose for which it was made and then bought. This cup doesn't really care. I'm the one who is washing it, drying it, putting it away in the cupboard, making sure it doesn't fall off because it will break. And if it breaks, it will not serve me anymore. It that means I have to go again to buy another one, spend another money. This is this cup. So what is the business of this cup? Nothing. It's just sitting there. The potter has made it, fashioned it, gave it the color, the kind of handle. It was the potter's business to sit down and think of what handle do I give? Do I make it longer? Do I make it shorter? Will it fit those who are going to hold it? Will it make for good gripping? Those suffering Parkinson's disease, can they be able to grip it? Can children comfortable hold it? If I don't think, and brethren, now you see, when Jesus says, take no thought, the thinking of what to make this cup is with the porter. Hallelujah. It's with the porter. It's the potter's business to do all the thinking, to do all the consideration. Who can handle this cup? Will it be convenient? Will it be comfortable? Will it, be, will it slip off? If the porter doesn't take time to think about this, he's going to lose money. He's going to waste his time because people can only come to buy the first time and then find out that it's hard to be held. It slips up. It's not a hard cup. It breaks easily. It doesn't keep um, hot water for a long time. Therefore, after the first buying, they will not come for the second one. Only out of time, he will run out of business. 
give it a little time sorry he will run out of business because people will not come so it is the manufacturer's duty to go and do all the research and development all the surveys to find out what color do you want how would you want your cup do you prefer the ones with shorter handles or with longer ones how would you want it what do children fancy it is the manufacturer's business to do the all to do all the research and then develop and then keep bringing some innovations and redoing it making his different from the others so that he can sell this is where we are if you've understood what I'm, i've just said the lord is saying i am the one who is the manufacturer i manufactured you the thought is mine what to make you off now are you following me this is mine i created you for my own beauty have i made you white it's so that you can fit your environment have I put more adipose tissue? Right. Have I built another person with more muscles? It's because I put them in the sun so that they can develop more muscles and get more energy to withstand the harsh weather. Have I put you out in the north and had not given you more muscles but more of um, adipose tissue is so that the cold cannot penetrate into your skin and then kill you. That is why I've made you the way you are. Have I given you hair that is huge and bushy? That's a reason. Have I given you the straight ones? That's a reason. They are to protect you. Have I given you a skin with melanin? It's for the reason. Because where I kept you, I don't want the UV rays to destroy you. Have I given you one without the melanin? That's the reason why I've done that. To keep you where the little sun you will get from your environment, it will penetrate your skin and give you the vitamin D that you need. Perfect Elohim. Since I'm the one to worry because if I don't make you fit for purpose, you will not perform at the best of your ability and I'm the one who will lose. If I don't feed you, you will not drop off on the street and die. I will not have one single person to live for my glory. I would like to take care. If I don't clothe you and don't put on things on you, I'm not a perfect God. I'm not a righteous father. I'm not a good father. I will take care. Leave that with me. It's my responsibility. Take no thought. Yours is to just go on and fulfill the blessings I've given to you, the gift I've given to you, whether it's the gift of beauty, use it to beautify the earth, but don't use it for, the sake, for, for Satan. What I've given you intellect is for my own God so that you can use it to help your brethren. He gave everyone little, little, even the person you think is has mental illness, even the person you think has some chromosomal defects, even some people you think, and we've given some all kind of names and call them disabled people. When you look in, there's something God has given to them that you don't have. He made us. He created us. He says, that thought you're taking is mine. You have no business doing it. I created the heaven and earth. I made the summer to give you the sun and the winter so that you can enjoy the cold and bring down the ice so that your ground will be watered ready for the spring when I take them all up take them all up I'll send them down again as rain to water you I'll take them up again to give you dry so is the season so are the seasons hallelujah take no thought I have put all sorts of grass in the field for you to eat before you were born. 
I made the broccoli, I made the vegetables, the greens, the mangoes, the guavas. I made all the wheat in the field. I put them there. None came from you. They sprang up from the earth. I did them. The cassava, I planted them. The yam, I'm the one that did it. The cocoa yam, I did it. The potatoes, I'm the one, the carrots, I put them in there. Go through the nations of the earth and see their food is amazing. Amazing, I tell you. Amazing. Go down and see the things they have planted. Yeah, we talk about, oh, you need to add fertilizer and these and that. Brethren, if I had not been to Coma Hills to go and see pumpkin as huge as a city in your room, I will not have told you who gave them nothing. The minerals from the mountains made them grow so big that it takes two men to carry them. If I had not been to the mountains, natural mountains for the first time, to see banana growing, planting growing, yet the inhabitants of the mountain don't know what it is. It's growing on its own. If I had not seen paper growing on the mountain, and yet the people living there don't know what it is. But down on the base of the mountain, few kilometers away, it's been sold in bags and people are eating. I wouldn't have known. The Lord made all these things. Yes, man talk about scarcity because he's man's invented. Man decided to do it. Check through the history. They amass, amass all the wealth, keep in the storehouse and ask people to queue up and come and take. That's the trading, that's the commerce, and that's the economics that has come into the world today. All around, we are trying to manage the scarcity which we created. Which we created. If it is possible, man will make the sun dark so that we can still pay to get a little. If people could be taxed for the size of their window. History is so funny. And brethren, these things all happened that people were taxed. You know, when we went to Ireland with the family some years ago, so they still have some thatched houses they kept in their museums and people are coming to visit. And what is the story behind these small windows? Because the larger your window, the more tax you pay. Because you pay tax according to the sunlight that comes in into your house. Hi, brethren, man in man's inhumanity to man. That's the nature of man, the depravity. Jesus says, now sit down and think. You were not part of the earth when I created them, when I created the oceans, when I created the seas, when I created the rivers and the springs and the falls and the waters in them are sparkling clean for you to go and scoop and drink. You were not part. When I made all the seeds and all the food and put them there, you were not part. When I created lower animals so that you can have for meat, I provided the meat for you. I provided the, the vegetables for you. I provided everything for you. Take no thought. I know your frame. I know what you're thinking about. I know where you live. I know the environment. Seek me first. I am the A and the Amen. I'm the Alpha and Omega. With me, all things are possible. There's nothing too hard for me to do. I am able to heal you. I can heal you because I created you. I created the virus. I created the, the I created the, the, the bacteria. I created the sun. I created whatever you have eaten out of ignorance that is hurting your body. I know what it is. I know what is inside you. I know your heart. I know your liver very well. I made them. I know your pancreas. I made them. I know your brain. I took my time and fashioned it and all the things inside it all the convolutions i'm the one that designed it i'm the best architect you can think about how close you i'm the best tailor 
the cutting you are using i give you the brain and give you the wisdom to go and spin it so that you can i planted those cuttings i put them out there the wolves i made them on the ships so that you can use them to cover yourself i give you the knowledge it's all with me take no thought i can care i can i'm i'm good i'm compassionate i'm the best you can ever think of trust me trust me i designed the earth i formed that ball I did the I did the architectural design. I put the sea where they should. I put the mountain where they can. Put the flowers. I created everything, and I made you. And I said, "Have dominion. Take no thoughts. Do not cry. Clean that tears that is wetting up that pillow every night." about that situation i am able all i'm demand all i'm asking from you is ask you will receive seek you will find knock it shall be opened unto you all i need from you is faith even if it's as small as that of the mustard seed i don't need the big one i don't need the skyscraper one i need the one as small as the mustard seed that's all i need and i'll do the job all i need is for you to know I'm a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All I need from you, my daughter, my son, look up to me, the author and finisher of your faith. All I need from you is to seek the things which are above. All I need from you is the obedience, the love. All I've commanded you to live peace at peace with all men all i need from you is to shun evil hallelujah and allow the fruit of the spirit to live in you take no thoughts i know you live in texas i know you live in kilgo i know those tall trees are beside your house and i know that with the tornadoes coming i know they can be uprooted and they can hit your house and then it it it, it would damage it i know i'm going to take them away it will even come and when it comes it will fall the other way off i'm aware put your trust in me and when we are aware of all these, we will allow him to guide us. That's the thing. Because we've not allowed him to guide us. We've walked into danger. We've done things we shouldn't have done. We've harmed ourselves. We've polluted our world. We've allowed things that if we had trusted him lived in obedience the world we are living in wouldn't have been what it is today not at all not at all all power belongs to him when we read the book of the bible from genesis all when the children of israel were crying in the wilderness oh the water is bitter hey he made it sweet for them when they cried and said we have no food what do we eat oh it is better we would have gone back to egypt gone back to slavery gone back to satan gone back to those illnesses and sicknesses and gone back to what when he had brought us out to the land that flows with milk and honey brought us out to righteousness from darkness brought us out to the glorious liberty of the new life in christ in the blood that was shed for all of us why do we want to go back is in the dark that it's you will experience all these things in the dark is not easy you have the tax man there with his axe to hew you down if you don't there's no mercy there there's no no not at all nobody cares it's dog eat dogs trample upon people destroy wars rumors of wars it's all kinds of things wickedness going on people treating others as nothing everybody's like this so there's struggle in that life no peace and jesus says come on to me O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. 
when that rest comes on us brethren jesus says take no thought we're going to continue this lesson this this evening join us to really break through into scriptures we just did the preamble and with all these things i'll ask myself why lord forgive me for helping myself forgive me for not seeing forgive the world for we've deceived ourselves we made ourselves in such a way we put things in place that we cannot see beyond our level beyond our selling to see he who had made us father have mercy father we thank you this morning and we bless you we worship you we glorify your name help us lord ancient of days to take no thought sit us down lord and reason with us to deliberate to reflect on your word on who you are so that lord we be humbled to accept this beautiful offering you've made to us this beautiful gift you've given to us thank you father be with us this evening as we continue with these to know why you said take no thought glory be to your name in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen we want to please um remind us um about the book his glory goes with us yes for a while we've not said anything about it but we realize that all of us brethren have to go on look at the people of the world how much they use advertisement to bombard us and bombard us until they break through now this is this book is the stories 33 stories in this book share it give it to those who have not got it will help a lot of people either one story or the other story in this or out of this 33 will bring someone out if it has blessed you let's not rest in our hours let's not keep quiet satan wanted to lie low satan wants us not to move anywhere so that the world will not be delivered brother shall we share these testimonies and i can see good, good, good things are coming out those who have read the book are already sharing or their own stories and then people are listening brethren now the beginning and all these things why will we keep calm there are billions of people on earth on the internet is only 2100 and then um, four or one has been which is nothing it's not even up to one million of whatever brethren let's share it make it tell the lord help me lord i've got whatsapp groups i can penetrate them in my country i've got um groups i can talk to heavenly father if there's nothing help me to share this evangelism too may the good lord help us it's free to download at www.assuring grace assuring grace one word please make sure it is one word if it is not one word your keypad may divide assuring from grace and it will take you to another website where you will not see this book but make sure that you type in assuring grace as one word dot org it will take you straight into to download your free copy in so many languages now we've got eight languages there so whether you speak spanish or you speak french or you speak germany or you speak um um um, um swahili or expano um, or portuguese or english they're all in there by the grace of god we're expecting praying that the hindi version will come the Urdu has been written but we need someone to read it so if you can read Udo, please we can give you what has been done so that you can give it some quality check before it is published and thank god also if you can do arabic please come on let's make sure that our brethren there are not left out and if you can go in into china we have the chinese version well very well written and then people are downloading we can see some few copies coming down from there still have your way in there and what a we let's 
let's do it. Dutch, by the grace of God, maybe this week a good work is being done. If you any language approach us, we are able by the grace of God to make sure that the 33 stories, these stories, people are out there reading magazines, reading all sorts of stories. Now here comes these beautiful stories that would build up faith. May the good Lord help us. Thank you so much.